back with uh, MECCG, Middle Earth uh, CCG. We're again playing or trying to conquer the coastal areas or regions of uh, Middle Earth. I have done a recheck and I've realized that in the last game I could have gone on because what I didn't realize, because it doesn't say so in the rules, at least that's not how I read the rules, but I read an extended play um, through as published in The Middle Earth, The Wizard's Companion, a book that is still available, by the way. <clears throat> um, you can play a character either at their home site or at any haven. Because in this book, um, the player Jennifer, I believe she's called, wants to play Hama in Rivendell. Now I checked Hama's card. Hama does not have Rivendell on his card at all. And why would he? Um, and he is, uh, his, his home site is Edoras. So, what I will then say is that um, someone whose home site is um, in the area connected to the Everlond Haven can also be played in Everlond. And somebody who is whose um, home site is associated with the Grey Havens. We don't have any of those um, characters actually would be playable at the Grey Havens as well. And for the purposes of this scenario where Rivendell is not a haven because it's not part of the game, if I had a character whose home site is the Ruined Signal Tower, which I don't think there is any character, they would also be playable at the Grey Havens. So, for example, um, Annalena, we would have been able to play her at Etherland anyway because that's the home site. But, um, for example, Anborn, whose home site is Pelagia, he could have been played in Etherland as could have been Adrazar and Imrahil. And of course, Alatar, is, his home site is Etherland. So, I've again played with the deck for five cards. And we are again trying to do this. So, where's my little miniature? We're at the Grey Havens, and again, we are going to <clears throat> control six sites, and we control sites by actually playing factions that are allied with those sites, or by facing and defeating their automatic strikes. So, Pelagia, we have the um, uh, Men of Lebanon. For the Grey Havens, we've got the Elves of Lindon. For uh, the Knights of uh, for Dolom Roth, we have the Knights of Dolom Roth. Plus, also, um, yeah, so we've got those. And, and the Men of Anfalas are playable at Lond Galen. So, <clears throat> let's see what we've got. And also, what I didn't get was we do have an organization phase. So, um, we can. Actually, um, we could have played um, Bella Gare, um as a short event. So let's say Bella. Let's see, from site of origin to one of the following sites. <clears throat> We're not going to do this just now. We've got two dodges and one healing herbs. So let's see. We're going to move to Everland, and we're going to draw um, six cards. Sea Serpent, Ambusher, Sea Serpent hits, Ambusher hits, Lost in the Wilderness, playable on a company that is moving this turn. You may play one additional hazard on a target company for each wilderness in its sight path. Um, yes, we do have one, so we draw Gloom. Okay, so <clears throat> we draw seven cards all together because of the Lost in the Wilderness. However, our maximum um, hazard limit is four. Sea Serpent strikes, so that's the first hazard limit down. Ambusher strikes, second hazard limit. Lost in the Wilderness applies, third hazard limit. Gloom applies, fourth hazard limit. So these ones actually go away <clears throat> because... If we, was play if we were playing against someone, they couldn't actually have played more than these four cards. But of course, they wouldn't have played them blindly. They would have made a choice. So Gloom, 
is playable only on a company that is moving. Um, one character um, in that company suffers minus one to their power. So we're going to roll, and we roll a five, so we have to roll again, and a six, we have to roll again, and a two, it's Annalena. <coughs> and just for this round. So Lost in Wilderness also goes away, it was applied. The Sea Serpent, Drake, two strikes, whoops, um, for 14 and body six. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> Good. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to... Um, play dodge on Kirdan, which means he does not... Um, tap against the strike of the sea serpent. And he rolls an 11, plus his 6 is 17, which is enough to defeat the sea, to, to counter the strike. But the sea serpent has a body of 6, and we roll an 11, so that's good. So the sea serpent's first strike is defeated. And that means if we defeat the second strike, we can actually overcome this sea serpent and put it in the uh, marshalling pile, marshalling points pile. So Kiran's going to go again. And that's 8 plus 6 is 14. That's not enough. So the strike is ineffectual. So the sea serpent goes away and we can't marshal it. We would have needed um, one additional point. The Ambusher, but Kira now of course is tapped. The Ambusher um, has two strikes for 10 and um, no body. So we're going to use uh, Arenmir, sorry, first, and he's going to tap. And he rolls a six plus two is eight. That's not enough. So he's wounded. Let's see. And for a nine, he's dead. That, that was bad. <laughs> okay, so it's not starting off too well. He, he's off to the side. We can assign one of his, one of his, um, his, um, the things he was carrying, items, and we're going to tap the cloak so that the ambush goes away. So that was a very bad first turn. It started off so well with the sea serpent. Oh, sorry, I should have actually drawn an additional card and I forgot this. Would have been dodge, wouldn't have helped. Okay, so we're now in Everland. Um... We are <clears throat> now going to untap people and items. Bloom also goes away. Um, also, what I don't do is if, if somebody who has influence over somebody else is discarded, this person that they have an influence over doesn't go away to, to compensate for the fact that the general influence is reduced anyway. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had to put Anborn under the influence of Arinmir. So they just basically then move up. And if I don't have enough general influence, then that's that. Okay, so in Everlong, we're going to play um, Alatar. <clears throat> and let's see. From there, we are going to play Fair Travel in Fair Travels in Wilderness, playable at the end of the organization phase. If a target company plays a new side card, the hazard limit for the target company decreases by one for every wilderness in its side path to a minimum of two. Alatar also reduces the number of cards drawn anyway. So we are going to go to... Hmm... We're actually going to not play it safe this time. We're going to go to Halb in Guanur. We're playing Fair Travels in Wilderness, which reduces our hazard limit by two. So now our hazard limit is only two. Alatar reduces the amount of cards by one, Halv in Guanur would make us draw two, four, six cards, so we only draw five, three, four, 
for five and only two strike. And we're going to draw the two cards that we're entitled to. Fellowship and Hauberg of Bright Mail. <clears throat> okay, so hazard limit is two. Brigands. Yep. Hobgoblins. Yep. So these ones we don't even need to look at because they won't hit. <clears throat> okay. Um, this time round, we are going to um, play dodge on Kirdan again. No, actually on Alatar. And he's going to take the first strike from the brigands. Oh, woo, that was that was close. Um, we rolled a four plus six is ten. That's enough to make the first strike go away and successfully. And then Kirdan taps to take the second strike. And he rolls an 11, which is enough. So these guys go away. They don't have any body checks to make. So they're in our marshalling um, <clears throat> pile. And the hobgoblins, we are just going to be... Um, yeah, we're just going to... Play dodge on Alatar for eight plus six is enough. So he's untapped and then he's going to tap and we're going to try those hobgoblins again. And we roll a six plus six is 12. So these also go away. So now we're in Hald in Guanur. We're going to discard Cram to untap Kirdan because obviously here we also have to... Um, <clears throat> Um, accept as it were one strike and it's one strike only from undead we have nothing to help us with strikes from undead but what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll and hope for a 10 that's all we need and we get a nine okay so that's not good so Kirdan's wounded and for five he's fine um, <clears throat> So I don't know if we can face it again, actually, until we get in. Is this how this works? I'll just I'll just rule that this is how this works. Otherwise, we have to stay here and um, face the cards again. That's not that's not how I'm going to play this because this is going to take ages otherwise. So next up is um, Annalena, and we roll a 10, 13, That's enough. We have conquered the site. So we're in it now. We can now get the um, site phase. Um, and we're now going to play a major item, the Hoburg of Bright Mail, and we're going to attach it to Kirdan, which increases his body to, well, actually it doesn't increase his body enough, because it's a maximum of, are you a, no, you're not. And um, so he's now got a body of nine. He's got one corruption point out of this. And since we played a major item, we can also play a minor item, and that would go to Annalena, and it's the healing herbs. <clears throat> and then we get to draw three cards to draw up to, oops, five. And of course, we need to tap the site. Let's untap. Everyone, well, Kiran's um, injured, so he can't. We are going to tap Annalena and discard the minor item, the healing herbs, to heal Kirdan completely, because that's now important. 
And let's now check the map. If what I'm planning on doing is actually possible, where did my map go? That is in Harondor. That's where we are at the moment. Is Harondor on the list? Elven Coast, Lindon. Yeah, we're going to play Belleguer. Company may move from a site of origin in one of the following regions, and our region is on the list, um, to a new site in one of the following regions, and Everland is obviously in that list as well. The side path is three oceans, and the hazard limit, again, is decreased by two to a minimum of two. So we're going to play this. We're going to move to Everland. <clears throat> um, we draw one fewer card because of Alatar anyways. We only draw four cards. No, we draw five cards. Sorry, my bad. And we have a hazard limit of two. Call of Home and Crebine. Each character in the company faces one strike. After the attack, the defender must reveal one random card. Okay, that's good. These go away. Now, <laughs> Call of Home, we've never managed to... Um, to win this yet, so we're going to use Annalena. We need to roll... Oh, the unused general influence is... 2. So we need to roll an 8. And it's eight, exactly. So Annalena stays with us. She doesn't heed the call of home. The call of her friends is stronger. But she would have been returned to my hand, which would have meant she would have gone back to the um, sideboard because in my rules, I don't have characters in my hand unless I make a decision otherwise because I, because the, uh, the, um, the scenario calls for it. I could have brought her back in Etherlond. Okay, so the Krebine strike us five times, uh, strike each person. So first of all, we're going to, um, I'm going to take a risk. I'm not going to tap Kirdan. So he's at a minus three. That's nice. First, um, so that one was okay. Um, Anborn is going to tap his Elven Cloak and Alatar. Annalena is tapped, so she can't take a strike. And Alatar with a 7 minus 3 is, is also way above it. So it goes away because we cancelled one strike. We're now in Etherland. Sorry, I forgot to draw two cards. And one card, so okay. <clears throat> Here we are, we are in Etherland. Sight phase, everyone untaps. Everything untaps. And... Um, we invite Adrazar. Now we invite Prince Imrahil to join us. Sorry, we are as so a. Is this in Edelon? Do we have any factions there? No, we don't. Okay, so <clears throat> um, Imrahil has just joined us under the general influence of Alatar. Um, and we conquered this particular haven, uh, this particular site. Okay, so let's see, we got the Star of High Hope. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to play Fellowship because we are in a haven. <clears throat> and then we are actually going to go to the Grey Havens.
and that is um, one, two, three, four, five, because of Alata, and our limit is um, five. Full of froth and rage. Ambusher. Yes. Cave Drake. Um, no. Fell Turtle, yes. And Doors of Night. <clears throat> so let's see. Ambusher, two strikes. We're going to take this, and we have a plus one to our prowess. We're going to take the ambusher with. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I forgot to draw a card. And fourth he hastened. Very nice one. Yes, <laughs> that's what we actually need. And fourth he hastened. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to assign the fell turtle is going to attack Kiodon. And we're going to take Annalena to face the ambusher. 12 piece of cake. Shouldn't have said that. And we're going to take Imrahil. And it's a six, so the ambusher is in our marshalling points. And we're going to play, and fourth he hastened to untap um, Imrahil. And then we're going to use Kirdan. Oh, sorry, I've got a plus one to um, prowess. So his prowess is seven. And we roll a five. Ugh. That's 12, that's not enough, so we have to do a body check, but his body is now 9. And for a 2, we're safe, but the fell turtle wasn't conquered. Um, oh, we must, oh, we must return to our site of origin. So we don't go to the Grey Havens, we return to the... To so we basically draw one card. Um, we heal and untap. Oh yeah, why not? We're going to play Star of Hope, Star of High Hope. And we're going to move again. <clears throat> draw one card. And we're going to draw um, one, two, three, four, five cards. Choking Shadows doesn't apply. Doors of Night is already in play. Choking Shadows doesn't apply. Carrion Birds may be played key to a wilderness after any orc. That didn't happen. Awaken Minions doesn't happen. We're in the Grey Havens. Woohoo! So, um, here we're going to try and get a faction into our midst, and that would be the Elves of Lindon. And... Um, Elves gives, gives us a plus two, so we're going to tap Annalena for this, because she is an elf. And we roll a six, eight, not enough. Okay, the elves go away. We didn't really convince them. Annalena was probably too rugged looking or something. So, yeah, that didn't work. Um, so we're going to um, now untap everyone. Kieran is also untapped. Um... Long event, uh, the Star of High Hope is tapped, so we only have it for one more round. Ah, what should we do? We've got no items. We've got the Black Arrow, which we could play. Um, we don't want to go to the Ruined Signal Tower. 
because spiders, it's a spider automatic attack and spiders have at the moment a plus something. Having said this, it would be two attacks with two strikes with 10 and then the card would go away. Should we risk it? We're going to play Great Ship. <clears throat> Let's go to the Ruins of Gun Tower. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. What this card allows us to do is, if company's current side path contains coastal sea as a coastal sea region and no consecutive non-coastal sea regions, which it does, until the end of the turn, any character in the company may tap to cancel the effects of one hazard that targets the company. So... Um, that's, that's a good one. So I draw two cards because I can draw two cards up to two cards. We draw five, one, two, three, four, and five. Hazard limit is one, two, three, four, five. First hazard is a giant, which does work. Giant spiders, which would work. Despair of the heart would work. Ea Karaxa, a hunt, and lure of nature. Okay, so we're going to do the following. First of all, we are not going... We're simply cancelling those giants. We are going to play not at home on Ear Karak's hunt. Um, this female dragon will have to come back another day. We're not facing her today. What do we say to death? Not today. <clears throat> um, okay. Despair of the Heart gets assigned to 1, 2, it gets assigned to Annalena. Lure of Nature. Four. One, two, three, four. Goes to Alatar. Very fitting. Target character receives two corruption points and makes a corruption check at the end of the movement hazard phase for each wilderness in his company's side path. During the organization phase, yeah, yeah, I have to say something about the organization phase and uh, getting rid of corruption cards because I found an interesting side note in the rules to the dragons. Okay, so which leaves us with the giant spider. Who has a... Um, a body, or who has a prowess of 12 now. So we're just going to play block. And we're going to let Kirdan try. And for 7 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8, that was successful. And he doesn't tap. And he does it again. And he's got 6, 7, 8, 10, 15. They go away. They are in our marshalling pile. So he's now tapped. And we are now um, at the ruined signal tower. <clears throat> and we are going to... Um, they're at 10. It's two spiders at 10. So first of all, we're going to use Imrahil for 7. Ah, that's not good enough. So he's now... Oh god, he's dead. <laughs> that's too bad. Sorry, Imrahil. Um, those pesky spiders. Um, <laughs> oh no, sorry. Or was it seven? What, what did I roll? Because he was at seven. Did 
Did I really? What did I roll? Even a ten would have. Even a three would. Have, I, sorry, I have to re-roll this because he's at. He's at doing a dance. He's at five, six, seven. Let's roll this again. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't think I rolled a two. So that was that, and then we have Alata for 12. So this one is successfully um, <clears throat> successfully done. Okay, so we're now at the Ruined Signal Towers and we're going to tap Annalena and we are going to play a card, namely, we're going to play the Sword of Gondolin and we're going to give it to Kirdan, which increases his prowess to 8. So this taps the Ruined Signal Tower and we're going to draw up to 5 cards. Okay. We're now going to add... So we're now in the organization phase, we're gonna, sorry, Alata needs to make two corruption, three corruption checks. Save, save, save. We're gonna play a, a permanent event, Echo of All Joy. Oh, we can't. Okay, so forget this, we're not going to play it. <laughs> um, that's too bad. goes away as well. Okay. So we're going to move back to the Grey Havens and That means we draw, again, five cards. We have nothing really to help us on our journey. One, two, three, four, five. Our hazard limit is five. Oh yeah, but the full of froth and rage goes away because we did fight those and we did win. Corsairs of Umbar. Inside Denizens. We're not moving to a lair. Noose of the Sea. Effect, affects each company with a coastal site in its path. On the ongoing effect of all resource shot events that were played during the organization phase are cancelled. Very good. We didn't play one. <laughs> Any. So that's one, two, three. Call of the Sea, playable on an elf character. The character's player must make a roll and return the character to the player's hand if this result plus the unused general influence is less than 10. Oh, okay. Our unused influence is two. Since we have this result is modified by minus three if the character's company moved this turn using a side path containing coastal seas. Yes, we did. Now, our general un unused influence is two. We're going to play this on Annalena. We roll a four. Annalena decides to um, 
leave us for a while. We can invite her back to meet us in Everlond, because that happens to be her home. Also, it's a haven. <clears throat> and lastly, a Huarn. Okay. Sorry, the courses of Umbar don't strike because we've got three wilderness, but the Huan does strike. <clears throat> and we're going to use Kirdan. We roll a 10, 16, 18, 19. The Huan is toast. Um, we are in the Grey Havens where we can play Anna Lena. Um, so first of all, we untap because it's a haven. We bring her back, which means... Did I actually draw my cards? No, I didn't. Um, cram. Um, we're going to discard this one. Um, uh, this one goes to our control pile. <clears throat> Okay, I actually don't want to bring her back just now. But we need to make three corruption checks. Yep. 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 Oh, yeah. About these cards. In the... It says here that you can tap the card and roll in the organization phase. And if you roll four... Uh, if you roll more than four, this card gets discarded. The lure of nature gets discarded. In the dragon's rules, they have then decided that you can actually still make the roll without tapping the character at a minus three. And I'm going to try this now. So six is not enough. Okay, that was worth a while, but it, worth a try, but at least he's not tapped. So now we're going to go to Everlond. <clears throat> um... One, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to draw two cards. It's a friend or three, and let lapse of will. Good. Arouse denizens goes away. The burden of time. Playable on an elf, not in a haven. Target elf receives two corruption points and must make a corruption check during each of his untap phases if he's not in a haven. Cannot be duplicated on a given elf. During his organization phase, an elf with this card may tap to attempt to remove it. Make a roll. If this result is greater than seven, discard this card. Yeah, we only have one elf and that's Kirdan. One, Raindrake, Raindrake does strike, Abductor does not strike, Corsairs of Umbar do strike. We're going to use Unborn's Elven Cloak to get rid of the Raindrake because the Corsairs of, Corsairs of Umba are bad enough. Um, I 
The first one hits at minus at plus one. So he's at two, five, six. So he needs five. He gets six, that's enough. One. Kiedan. Six, seven, eight, nine. So, he's, so I'm gonna not tap him. That's enough. And lastly, Alatar. Nine, that's enough. The Corsairs of Umba are in our discard pile, in our marshalling point pile. We are in Everland. We untap everyone. Nobody was hurt. Um, <clears throat> in the organization phase, Alata is going to try and get rid of this permanent event. Six. Which was not enough. And Kirdan's gonna try and get rid of the burden of time. It's not enough. Okay. So now we're gonna go to Pelagia. No, actually, we're going to go to Dolom Roth. We draw one card, and they get to draw two, four, minus one, three cards. One, two, oops, Moose of the sea goes away. Three. None of these hit. It's very good. We end on Amroth, where we are going to try and influence Sorry, did we have a long event phase in the last turn? We did, didn't we? I would have played laps of will. So, um, Dolamroth, we are going to try and get the Knights of Dolamroth on our side. Um, standard modification, Dunadain plus one, plus a Prince Imrahil has plus two. Um, so we have plus three altogether. And we roll a nine, which is way enough to get these Knights on our side. So they go to our marshalling point. And we tap Dolamroth. <clears throat> and Prince Imrahil is then untapped again. And we're going to move to Etherlon. We draw three cards. Breed playable on a site. Carrion birds doesn't hit, and the cave drake does not hit either. So we're in Everland. <clears throat> we're not going to do anything, but the lapse of will goes away. Dolamroth has been influenced positively. So I would suggest that we try to go to Lond Galen to get the men of Anfalas on our side. Sorry, I forgot to draw a card. And it was Gates of Night Morning, which we're going to put in play to get rid of Doors of Night.
And we are going to go to Pelagia. One, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, we wanted to get rid of these cards, didn't we? Okay. Finally, no, that's not enough. Greater than, and let's do it over here. Um, 11 minus 3 is 8, so the burden of time goes away. It's really important to remember that we have to do this. Did we go through a... We did, didn't we? So we have to do one corruption check, but he's fine. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> Awakened Denizens, Corsairs of Umbar, Nope. Nope. And the brigands. They will hit. Man, two strikes. <clears throat> Imrahil for six. Eight. That's just enough. And Alata. Yep. Um, the men of Anthalas require a influence of greater than eight, and we're going to tap Unborn because he's a Dunadan. And we roll a five. That wasn't enough. They were not convinced by what we had to say. Pelagi gets tapped. And um, so now we're in the untap, untap phase. Corruption check for Alatar. He passes, and then we're going to try and get rid of this. Six, it's not enough. Okay. So we're going to go to Etherlond. This one goes away. We didn't finish. We didn't conquer that. What was the story of Lond Garmin? Was there somebody there that we tried to... Oops, we went to the wrong place. That's fine. I mean, we wouldn't have made the check anyway, so Lond Garland <clears throat> can't really help us either. So we're now in Etherlond. We're going to... Um, Draw five cards, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna draw one card. Um, okay, that doesn't really help. Lure of Expedients, Awaken Minions, Awaken Denizens, Giants, Call of Home. Lure of Expedients. goes to Unborn. Call of Home. One, two, three, four, goes to Imrahil. Our unused influence is five. And he leaves us. That's going not so swimmingly, and the giants do not attack. We're now in Everland. Alata needs to make one corruption check, which he passes. We're going to try and get rid of these. <coughs> Fellowship goes away. I have six cards, none of which really make sense, so we're just going to get rid of the iron shield. We rolled a five, that's not enough. Let's see what we can do here. We rolled a six, that's not enough either. Um, but we are going to play a character and we're going to bring back Imrahil. Under the influence of Alata. Okay, so let's um, see how many marshalling points we've got. We've got three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And three sites under our control. We can put these away because we can't go to Long Garland anyway. We need three more. Let's go to Tolfalas. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Five, and I'll draw one card. It's another dagger of westerness. Choking shadows. Oops. Does work. Doors of night replaces gates of morning. Crabine strikes and. Noose of the Sea doesn't work, but Ead Karakse a hunt does. Now this is terrible. So first of all, we're gonna. What are we going to do? We are going to face Ead Karakse a hunt. I'm just gonna try it now. So, um, he's not gonna block. He's not going to tap. Six, eight. Nine from Imrahil. That didn't work. Ten, fourteen. Okay, so he's hurt. And we rolled a six, which is not enough, so he's not killed. And Air Karaksa at a hunt was successful. So now we're gonna um, have two strikes that we need to face. Six was successful, and four is also successful. They go away. And we're now in Tolfalas, which we cannot even enter. So we're not gonna face the strikes because we simply can't and we're going to move back to Etherland. that was a barrel of laughs oh sorry he's just still wounded there is nothing we can do okay we're gonna get block okay so let's try this again one, two, three, four, five. Fell turtle, full of froth and rage. Abductor, Corsairs of Umbar, and inside denizens. They go away because we can't play them. The fell turtle we can play, and we can play the Corsairs of Umbar. So, uh, Yeah, we're gonna attack the fell turtle for four, ten, that's not enough. And we lose the game because we've just killed Alatar. So as you can see, the game is really hard, um, in spite of the fact that I have been improving my deck, so it's going a lot better now than it used to go, but it's, it's a tough game. I still find it really difficult to remember to draw cards. I should have drawn a card now, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should have drawn one card. Would that have made any difference? Concealment. Tap a scout to cancel one attack against his company. Yeah, I could have... I could have done this. I could have... Yeah, I could have... Made sure that the fell turtle does not attack. Um, but, yeah. Um, as you can see... 
it's it's a really tough game. So even though I know what's in the deck and even though I've put the deck to myself and I've been working on my own resource deck, it does get um, harder and harder um, because, of course, you do have the die rolling and the die rolling, yeah, well, it's dice. Um, something that I do find a bit problematic because I tend to forget it is when to draw cards because you don't only draw cards at the end of the turn but also before you move. And before you move you can draw the number of cards indicated on the side up to but you have to at least draw one. Um, so I have to also look at the at the deck, the um, the threat deck again, or the, the um, yeah, the threat deck, let's call it, has let's call it hazard deck as it's called, um, and see how many cards I've got in there, because the recommendation is to have kind of like 30 in there and have half, I think it's half and half, isn't it? What does he say again? How does he play this game? Um, Oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, has a deck thirty, and the resource deck is about forty. So my resource deck is about fifty, um, and the hazard deck is one. Two, three, four, it's forty four. That's that's good. So it should be fifty fifty. So fifty percent, um, events and, um, 50% uh, creatures and I think I've pretty much got that but the creatures of course are very dangerous and um, I think it's also um, Maybe I need to look at the items again that I have. I mean, in the last game that I recorded, if you remember, I ended up with no with many items that I couldn't play simply because I couldn't go to any of the of the places where I could play them because they were so dangerous. Um, and I had no events, and I would have needed events. And this time round, I've had plenty of events. Um, and I was able to play items, so that was good. So yeah, if, as you can see, it's almost 50-50. So um, yeah, I think I think the deck itself is good. Um, and the contents are good. The contents are really challenging. So this is a really challenging game. Um, and I think this goes to show that even if you build the deck yourself, even if, the, if you build your hazard deck yourself, um, with the fact that you've got dice involved the game still is challenging enough um, because somebody said yeah how can you play the solo because um, since you know what's going to come out of the deck which is only partially true because of course you do not know from the very beginning what's going to come out of the deck you only find out as you play um, what's coming out but um, how is this a challenge well as you can see it's a great challenge and I don't think it's just a challenge because I'm not a good player and I'm not saying I am a good player. Um, I still have to really work on the turn sequence. Um, but there is enough going on, even with the um, 
you know, you saw that there were some turns where nothing happened, where none of the hazards played were affecting the group and still we lost, you know, still we were unable to um, hire enough men. Um, so that was a big issue that we didn't get all of our factions out. So, yeah, I guess that this is, um, this is, this is proof that this game lends itself to pre-made scenarios that you play against a pre-made hazard deck whose contents you know, and it will still be a challenge. Otherwise, I would have breezed through this. I mean, this is my fourth playthrough, and the one that I won, I won't even count because I'm pretty sure that I made so many mistakes that I would not have um, won it because I probably just overlooked the fact that I'd already lost. Just like playing chess and you don't realize that you've just lost and you just keep playing. Okay, so um, I don't know if I will do another run through of this scenario on camera. I will definitely try again because I do want to win. Um, but if you want to see this scenario one more time, you can just give feedback on the channel. Otherwise, I will move on to other things. And I would also like to um, do another video today, just a short one, to show you how I get my resources. Thank you.